not on podcast them down. My lifestyle determines my death style. Hail Metal Nation! It is I, Tim, from Fade to Black Metallica Tribute, and I am joined by Mark, special guest this week. <laughs> from uh, Fade to Black Metallica oh Tribute. What? What's so funny? Yeah. And uh, Doug and Matt, who you know from the rest of all of our wonderful episodes. What? <laughs> Is something I funny? Can't, I can't deal with it. <laughs> it's so incredible. This is already the best episode of Podcast and Down ever. This is the Saint Anger episode. I think this we brought this up <laughs> at New Year's. We've been wanting to talk about Saint Anger for a long time. And this is how long it took for our schedule to align with Mark's. Like this. It's pretty, it's pretty good. I've, uh, well, that was for the, the twatchers. <laughs> and the, the YouTube people, not, uh, not the listeners. See what I'm doing here. Oh, you mean like when you do this? <laughs> yeah, totally. How do, how do you bend like that? I, I meant to have the, uh, the fade to black upcoming shows in front of oh, me, right. but instead I didn't, so pad for time. Something, something Delaware, something, something New Jersey. All right, I got uh, it here. Not New, Jersey. Week. Not New Jersey. Not New Jersey. All right. Uh, really? I don't know when this will air, so some of these might have already happened. Uh, so it's Metallica. So, if you came out to our show on May 13th, uh, Wilmington, Delaware at the Queen, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> coming. Tell us how you liked it. If it's before May 13th, please come see us. At the Queen in Wilmington, Delaware. And I think we're playing with Pentera at that show. Ooh. And then June 4th, yeah, Asheville, <laughs> June 4th, Asheville, North Carolina. The Orange Peel. July 16th, Halethorpe, Maryland. Right outside of Baltimore. At Fishhead Cantina. August 19th and 20th in Raleigh and Greenville. At the Lincoln and State Theaters, respectively. August 26th and 27th in Bristol, Tennessee. In Lynchburg, Virginia. At Sidetracks and Lido's respectively, and then sometime uh, September 15th through 17th, Ocean City, Maryland, Bike Week, October 1st at Average Joe's Beer Nasium in Baldwinsville, New York, October 13th in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at Har Harley-Davidson, November 5th, Newark, Delaware at halftime. And uh, as always, check the website, check the Facebook links are in the description. For the latest dates and info. So you already heard the St. Anger snare. And that's not the last of it you're going to get. Because I got it right here. Yes. Thank goodness. We also keep got, that handy. I also got the sad but true snare uh, for comparison. Ooh. <laughs> I don't hear a difference. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I also realized we should be doing anger. more metal events in hail thorpe because i mean it sounds like a great place to do metal stuff oh shit wrong one no go god there we go did we start the show already am i that I zoned out no i already started my, my finger slipped okay all right, all right all right so uh let's talk about the this double platinum metallica mm -hmm. album that almost mm -hmm. derailed their career. <laughs> so. I think it's one of their longest as well, as I rediscovered listening this week. It sounds like the longest. So uh. Uh, I, I, don't, I haven't thought of the best way to go through this, but I'll tell you my experience with Sane Anger. All right. Uh, Metallica had sued Napster and everyone was mad yeah. at them, even though it turned out Metallica was right. And, uh, but that's a different episode. Yeah, that's another Metallica episode. So, Sane Anger leaked uh, maybe a week before it was supposed to come out mm -hmm. on, the, on the Napster or the internet or something. And, uh, Could have been LimeWire by that point. <laughs> yes, it was 2003. I was, I, I'm thinking Kazaa. Ooh, yes. Kazaa. I think cause, was Kazaa between Napster and LimeWire? Not, that, so. not that I've ever used such programs. Um, so, 
Uh, it leaked. They pushed up the release date because of that. And then, uh, before the, let's just say before the release date, I was driving in my car, listening to the new Saint Anger on CD. And I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> and I got four songs in before I literally threw it out the window. So it's Did gone. Did you actually throw the disc out the window? I literally threw the disc out the window. Wow. <laughs> I might have hit a squirrel. Who I knows? mean, that's just sliced his head right off. That's multiple uh-huh. crimes. Yes. And then I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so, um, but I, I have since remedied that I'm holding. Okay. Pain anger. However, Zach, drummer of Fade to Black, uh, gave this to me and the disc is missing. So he might have thrown it out too. <laughs> <laughs> but importantly, the DVD is in here. So, well, it's, it's in my computer over there. Yes. <laughs> but the DVD was in here and we'll come back to that. You know, I, I would like to full disclosure. I still own the copy of St. Anger that I bought at Tower Records in Rockville, Maryland. And I did not throw the disc out of the car as I was moving. That's for Tower. But we should also recognize at the time I had a 10 disc CD player in the trunk, which we already mentioned in a previous episode. So it might not have been physically possible to do so. So if you so wanted to, very dangerous. if you wanted to throw it out, you'd have to stop and get out. Yeah, and open the trunk. Open the trunk. Open the door. <laughs> press the cassette out. Open one of the little plastic CD holders. Then, in a rage, throw it, and and that just seems way too much. So Agreed. I, I don't know if anyone else wants to. Uh... I I will gladly <laughs> share my Saint Anger story. So the. What do we know the date it was released? It was in May, right? <laughs> something, something, 2000. Uh, it was well, late May. So I think it was May 18th. Can somebody fact check that? May 18th. The official, the official release date was June 5th, 2003. Okay. Well, then I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, that's pretty but that, close. but, but that but leaked, it leaked. That it leaked. That leak <laughs> could very well have been late in May. It had no, to June be, right? 5th sounds right because. I, that was my high, the, the, the day it came out early was the day of my high school graduation. So I almost was late for my high school graduation. Uh, me and my best friend at the time, we like left right after, uh, I don't even know what we were doing. I think we had like some rehearsal nonsense and we left right from that to go buy the album in Lancaster at Circuit City. Ooh. Rest in peace. And thank you. And, because the songs are so damn long. By the time we got back to our graduation, which I was almost late for, I had gotten, <laughs> I believe, through Frantic and St. Anger, and it started some kind of monster. <laughs> so, I have already made a shocking St. Anger discovery. St. Anger is actually the shortest post-load era Metallica disc. Uh, I guess the, that makes the, sense. Because the, the other following- two are- Death Magnetic. No, no, no. The following what? albums are longer than St. Anger. Load, Reload, Death Magnetic, and Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Well, time slows down when you're listening to St. <laughs> Anger. But we also have to account for like the 15-minute outro of the Outlaw Torn. So I think that's a lot of... Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll I'll stop doing the snare for a little okay. Bit. All right, all right. I will say for me, um, that this was the first Metallica album that I was that. Well, I guess it, it, if you want to call S and M an album, it's like a, it was a live album, but this was the first album that was released. Um. Like that, I got the day it came out. Since I, I became a fan of Metallica, I was like twelve when I first heard Fuel, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" You know, so Saint Anger was the first studio album that came out since I became a Metallica fan. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Oh, Garage, what am I talking about? Never mind. Well, <laughs> I messed that up. <laughs> 
Oof. Yeah, I, I think we mentioned I was nine <laughs> when I got into Metallica, and Sounds right. the Black Album was the newest at the time, so I did get, I got, until it sleep single the day it came out, mm-hmm. I probably oh, got loaded yeah. in the days they came out. You definitely did. Garaging, re- s and uh, I don't know if I have a physical copy of I Disappear. I bet I do. Uh, I bet yeah. you do. And if you don't, I do. Um, <laughs> I remember being, I remember you and I were butt-sized. Butt-sized. The video, <laughs> the video for Until It Sleeps premiered. I think we were doing like, dr- like kick flips, like in the living room. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, we didn't do that one in our uh, music video <laughs> episode. Yeah, no, no. Well, there we, there's other Metallicas to come. <laughs> well, for Mark's, <laughs> for Mark's information. <laughs> Since since it hasn't aired yet, so he hasn't had a chance to see it. But we on this audio podcast we reviewed Metallica music videos. So <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I've also discovered that uh Saint Anger is longer than either disc of S and M. The song itself or No 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 no, no. That, so that so if you want to count that I mean, obviously not the two discs, but <laughs> the St. Anger disc is longer than either disc one or disc two of S&M. So there, you got that. That's the asterisk. As- asterisk. 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 So, asterisk. so, <laughs> uh, I wanted to do just, I, I expected we'd just do an episode shitting on saint anger but then mark genuinely likes it and then doug pointed out that uh well i don't want to speak for you mark but doug you pointed out a long time ago but i did speak for you mark (laughs) doug pointed out a long time ago that the reviews are either highly praising or highly negative highly negative lowly negative (laughs) they're there's nothing in the middle. Split. Mm-hmm. Right. There's yeah. nothing that's like, eh. So. Yeah. So I, and I, I just didn't remember it being well reviewed. And I, I would have been working at Blockbuster Video then. I probably bought it at the Best Buy, on Stone River Parkway. Woo! Um, and oh, that, yeah, that deserves I, that. I think it was a positive review and record of the, one of the records of the year. Uh, and I don't think I hated it. Uh, I wasn't super indoctrinated to metal then, so might have been more open to noise. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, the, the famous Rolling Stone review, for example, is a glowing review. Um, that, that and, and I think, you know, uh, some, some fun I've had. I've always been St. Anger agnostic. Um, I don't particularly enjoy listening to it. Like I will not, um, St. Anger frustrates me because there's a lot of songs that could have been good with another like six months and some genuine editorial restraint. Um, (laughs) you know, like, like, uh, what's that sweet Amber? It's so close to being a great song. Uh, but it's not at all. Um, so, but I appreciate, I feel like St. Anger's existence is necessary for the continuation of Metallica rather than it turning into something, you know, like Van Hagar, (laughs) you know? So So, I appreciate its role, even if I don't ever listen to it, unless I'm researching for a St. Anger episode of Podcast I'm Down here on Maytown. You got to bring, you bring up a really good point, like the history, what was going on in Metallica at the time, right? So I'm just thinking with me personally, becoming a Metallica fan, actually first starting listening to like mainstream music in general, uh, around the time Fuel Memory Remains came out, you know, every time each Metallica record I'd get, just got better and better. I was like, oh my gosh, how can this get so much better? You know what I mean? And then you have S&M, which is probably my favorite album still, 
to date. I just love that album. The mix is fantastic. James's voice sounds awesome. Everybody sounds great, you know. And then you know you go in. I disappear. Pretty cool song. Amazing mm-hmm. music video. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder about music videos. But <laughs> then you know James goes into rehab. Jason quits the band. Being a relatively new Metallica fan at the time, like this was like, holy shit, this could be it. This could be done. Like we didn't have as much um access to like internet and stuff, you know, knowing what was going on, you know what I mean? Um you know, being a young kid with Metallica like being everything to me musically, that was like a real tumultuous time. And then so with St. Anger coming out, I was like okay, they're back, you know, they at least, they they're, they put an album together, this is good, like, this is a good thing, that means it's going to keep going, right? Mm-hmm. So I think all of that emotion, it, and like you said, it needed to happen, it had to happen. Yeah, and yeah. I, go ahead, Doug. I was going to say, I think it has to be acknowledged that uh, well, there were some other contemporary bands that put out arguably kind of similar sounding records in you know just a stepping into new metal and uh um kind of drawing from the uh, 90s heavy sound a bit like helmet or, or even killing joke metallica didn't if this wasn't a sellout record it's not like judas priest demolition right uh th- th- this was a sincere attempt on their part to do a record that sounds like what it sounds like yeah so to, to that end, yes, lots of other bands were doing that. I, I had a similar experience with uh, Dream Theater's album that came around, out at, around the same time, uh, Six Degrees mm-hmm. of Inner Turbulence. That first disc is just crap, except for uh, Disappear, which is the last track. And then the second disc is good. But like, yeah, they, they tried to... They, they went kind of uh, ra- uh, new metal-y, and John Petrucci like frosted his hair just like uh Lars and James did in Metallica yeah. around the same time everyone was doing it the smash mouth look <laughs> and then uh, and uh well, it, also around the same time Iced Earth put out a stinker that sold very well too uh this was this was b- this was before <laughs> this was before all right okay go ahead <laughs> you bring up a really good point though because like you know, I started my freshman year of high school in 1999, graduated in 2003. Like, that's like the peak of new metal. Corn was huge. You have Limp Biscuit, all this kind of stuff that people are saying, oh, yeah, this is heavy music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Y- you got to take it into context when we're discussing this. You know what I mean? I yeah, mean, so- I'm looking at other metal and hard rock kind of albums that came out. So, like, the closest one uh, was a hymn record. So H-I-M? I mean H I M, um, uh, Lamb of God record. Th- these are 2003 is not the. Uh, oh, there's got to be something that came out in 2003. 2003 in heavy. Th- I'm looking right now. It's not looking too good. Um, <laughs> Power Man 5000. Dance of uh, Death was all right. Sepultura. Oh, Train of Thought. Uh, that was when they yeah. full on rapped. <laughs> yeah. But but what I'm saying is like a oh hail to the thief hey, well I mean it's not a metal album but that's a great album but but what I'm saying is like I could very easily see a more put together less dysfunctional Metallica having a total like Lars once Snoop Dogg to guest on every track um, <laughs> and they just create like the Lincoln Park Jay Z Collision Course Metallica Dog Pound Gang Experience album. Um, or I could see Metallica making like a, a, a very self-destructive James Hetfield soul spills out on wax. Uh, and we have black album 2.0 followed by Metallica will never speak to each other ever again. Right. <laughs> no, and, you, you, cause have you guys heard some of the demos they were working on before James went into rehab? I don't think so. Yeah, I yeah. haven't. There's, um, oh my gosh. If you get a chance, I, during some kind of monster, you know, in the, uh, 
documentary or whatever, they played some of them, but like the path that they were going in, I don't think would have been sustainable. Kind of like what you mentioned. I, I think St. Anger possibly saved us from something really bad, just like you were saying. <laughs> so the way, the way uh, I, I read an article uh, where they talked, to, it was sound on sound.com talking to Bob okay. rock a couple years after St. Anger came out. It wasn't like a huge retrospective, but uh, basically uh, Jason had disappeared. They, mm -hmm. They went into, they turned an empty barracks or something uh, called the Presidio into their rehearsal studio. And they basically, the idea was to get a raw sounding album, you know, four guys in a room. And, um, and I, I think Bob Rock says something along the lines of, uh, you know, people were going more raw or like we started this whole raw, like people uh, getting rid of some of the polish off their recordings. Right. So they just basically jammed a lot, hoping for in inspiration in the moment. Right. And then this, they were also, this is the first time they were recording digitally. So no analog. Mm. anything. So Bob Rock says in this interview says pro tools, about 800 times and basically <laughs> they get like uh they jam on an idea and record it and then jam on the idea and change how it sounds like different feel and then do that a bunch of times and then they put it all together uh later so they were like getting ideas and then in pro tools going stick this here stick this there yeah and they just stick the song together. And if you hear it that way, uh, stuff like the, the title track <laughs> makes total sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so then James goes into rehab and then he has, uh, when he comes out, he has the, the time limitation uh, that they famously argued about in, in the movie. So like yep. he can only work something like four hours a day. And so... Uh, to get around that, like, uh, apparently they like to write, he likes to write lyrics in the studio for the most part. Okay. So if he couldn't come so he up with an idea after 15 minutes, that's when all of them would start pitching ideas. And that's oh. where you get my, you know, my lifestyle determines my death style and stuff like that. And, you know, the whole thing is, uh, if it sounds very much slapped together and disjointed, that's why. That was the whole point. Was were, were they working on finished music and just adding lyrics to it, or I don't, is it more organic than that? I don't think so. I think Lars Lars did a lot of arranging while James wasn't there, and just kind of okay. like built songs, and then they'd. Where I I think I think there were pieces that came together, and then stuff that had to be figured out uh, in the moment. Here's and, a riff. Okay. Yeah, so apparently that's how they did the whole thing. And you, you get a sense of that in some kind of monster the movie, but not so much. But, but it really stands out uh, when Bob Rock is saying, literally, this is what we did, and we <laughs> shuffled things around, yeah. and we used Pro Tools and this and that. And but What's interesting, sorry. I was going to start talking about the snare, so how about you go ahead? It's just weird to me. That for the, you know, the whole album, the way that you just described it, which I've not heard that before. That's really interesting. It's just interesting that they decided, Hey, let's do drop C for everything. Which yeah. brings me yeah. to my next point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you wanted, uh, I mean, Doug, I'm going to steal your thunder. If you want the sound of four guys in a room making it, heavy music listen to the rehearsal dvd that's mm -hmm. so that's the dvd that's not in the package because i was watching it mm -hmm. <laughs> um and it, that's what it literally is unpolished four guys in a room no auto tune no eqing the guitars to hell apparently the drum set he mic'd with 
four mics. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't tell. (laughs) So, yeah. So, (laughs) like they tried to they tried to manufacture this raw sound, and then alongside the 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 CD, you would get a DVD with the raw sound. And Doug Doug said he they should have just released the DVD songs as the songs, and it would have been fine. And I agree. It would have been less bad that way. But the snare is still there. It's not so apparent in the first two songs. So, for those who don't know, for some reason, Lars took the snares, you know, released the snares off the snare drum, and sounds like this, instead of this. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. um, and apparently it was tuned high, but like, they said this gives us our raw sound that we like. I like I like the way this sounds. And everyone else thinks it sounds like a trash can. Cause uh it kinda kinda does. But you know, I I wonder I wonder about that a lot. Uh and and I, I sent you a video uh that I found while prepping for this episode of, of Lars saying uh, explaining how to get the uh Saint Anger sound. And it's like, watch this, you do this. And now you will lose fans. You will uh, not sell out venues. Everyone will hate you. All you got to do. All right. You're, you're a hit. Oh, no. Everyone hates you again. Um, but uh, the way I was thinking about it is maybe it sounded really good in their little warehouse. Right. And, and perhaps the digital elements. I can imagine, especially given all the constraints they were under. Um, and them being like spoiled rich babies at this point and having Bob Rock play their bass. Um, I can imagine this being them like two take Jake's and saying like that, that sounds perfect. Fix it up in post. Um, <laughs> and, and, and it's the same way, you know, everyone's surprised the way that when their voice, when they hear themselves recorded, because yeah. there's all kinds of timbre and stuff going on inside your head that no one else is listening to. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what's wrong with my microphone. Cause, uh, right, no. When I listen back to the podcast, it sounds all different. It's the fact that your ears aren't in the middle of your throat, right? Uh, which is fucking metal. <laughs> and that's a fucking <laughs> Burning Shadows album. And the titular song. But <laughs> it's probably an RGV song, actually. But um, Recently, anyway. Graves Vacated. <laughs> Wait, uh, fuck, <laughs> RV. You, you know what I'm it's talking a comma. about. It's, it's Yoda singing. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, brains you want. <laughs> um, but I'm saying, behind the kit, maybe that sounds amazing. And maybe, I think it's you a good know, point. Kirk is just, Kirk is just wants one damn solo. Kirk isn't into this. You know, James is just there for like 15 minutes and they have to keep them away from like the cleaning fluids. And then like <laughs> Bob Rock is just happy to be working because it's 2003. Yeah. So, you know, maybe no one's going to just check Lars on that. Uh, another gem that came out of this article is they gave uh, Bob Rock three hours per song to do the mix. So like after they're done tracking and arranging, they're like, OK, you have three I mean, hours. The seems to. <laughs> I'm willing to, to bet credibility like a lot of, to my theory. I'm I'm willing to bet a lot of this was uh, was uh, financial constraints because they recorded at the Presidio for so long while they built their headquarters. Then they mm. moved into their headquarters. Bob Rock had a bunch of equipment shipped shipped from Maui <laughs> to San Francisco. And, um, and then they go, okay, uh, we got five. <laughs> you, you have time for three minutes per song. Go. We have money. We have enough money <laughs> for three minutes per song. And go, 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 go. <laughs> so aside from the snare. So if you want to get over the snare, uh, and really evaluate sane anger for its songwriting, because I know I know a certain drummer of a certain amazing Metallica tribute uh, will not listen to Saint Anger <laughs> because of the snare. There is a guy. Oh, I should have should have pulled pulled up their name. Uh, a couple of guys re-recorded 
the entire album pro- properly with like with a a drum set that doesn't sound like trash cans. Mm. Let me see if I can uh, find it real quick. It's on Daryl Gardner's YouTube page. Maybe I'll put the link in the description. But um, yeah, they re-recorded the entire thing uh, in 2015. And it's way more listenable. But then yeah. the... The, uh, what's the word I want? <laughs> the songwriting flaws start to stick out if, they, if, yeah. you, if you weren't already aware of them. So one thing that irks me is like stuff overstays its welcome or gets too many repeats or is it like frantic, for example, like keep searching, keep on searching happens too many times and it's the same every time and uh that's the type of thing it sounds like a copy and paste error in pro tools <laughs> it's like oh shit i pasted it twice and clearly they were trying to space apart all the bridges because all these songs have multiple bridges mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and when they come back to the verse and stuff they don't uh they don't change it. It's just like, here's another verse pre-chorus chorus, and uh, we didn't really change anything. You're welcome. Now, you bring up an interesting point with Frantic. Personally, I really like that song. Um, obviously, the production issues are huge and glaring, and if you can get past them, I think it's a pretty solid song. Seeing where you came, you know, My Disappear... I, sorry, I disappear minus human. J- just seeing progression where they're going, it makes sense to me. I yeah. was, and it was, uh, I was very pleased because you know, I don't think that I had didn't hear that. Like I heard that you know a fresh take without having been able to look it up on the internet and hear the leak. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, this mm-hmm. is really cool for like an opening track. Like um, you know, you had. Uh, you know, fight fire with fire, battery, blacken, enter Sandman, ain't my bitch, fuel, you know, frantic as an opening track kind of takes you back to the, the power kind of like blackened and all those had as opening tracks, in my opinion. And, and I think frantic might be the most put together track on the album. Um, if I listen to a Saint Anger track, it's either three quarters of Saint Anger or Frantic. Um, um, so, I mean, I think in terms of song, and maybe it's just because after I get past Frantic, I'm like, all right, I'm done with Saint Anger again. Um, but, um, I, you know, I think that's, as you say, the strongest of this weird ensemble of stuff. That's the most complete song. <laughs> Yeah, I guess absolutely. Um, like Saint Anchor is an almost complete song with a vamp problem. Um, uh, some kind of monster is like the op- It's like the inverse and opposite problem of Saint Anger. Uh, and then I got uh, the track listing. I don't listen to most of these. Uh, Sweet Amber. Um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I was just looking to see if there was a radio ad. Did a frantic, like put a radio producer in there and see how they get that down to four minutes or whatever. Yeah. Sure. But no, there isn't. Yeah, they released the full version. But yeah, it's like, well, I, and I think, again, I think like editorially, that could have been a great um, kernel of a song. Like you just prune it and trim it and put a fucking guitar solo in it, uh, and that could be a good song. Right? That could be a good Metallica song, even. Well, I think this is a problem uh, not only Metallica had, but uh, Judas Priest and some of these other bands, and they tried to write, you know, Godsmack songs. Uh, you know, they, they just kept how they structured things, so they were writing more complicated songs, and uh, it just becomes very repetitive. And, you know, the, the new metal songs people remember are like three minutes long. You know, some of them start to overstay their welcome after two minutes, 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what 
was popular, you know? Yeah, the Frantic's, you know, a you know, thrash song with many of the trademark elements of thrash taken out, uh, but not, not the length. It's the same structure, all six minutes. Absolutely. So so the other thing, yeah. look at the other big four bands that, like they're similar they're uh, you know contemporaneous albums are all pretty weak it's god hates us all it's that uh 2003 anthrax album oh mm-hmm. we've come for you all and i guess megadeth would be the world needs a hero and in that company san anger looks okay <laughs> right it was- what what was even on that megadeth album the world needs a hero is the only song which is terrible. Yeah. And nothing. Yeah. 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 So I think we also need to put it into the context of the the low point, I think, of at least mainstream big metal bands at this point too. It, it it's it's kind of this weird transitional like new metal wasn't new anymore. New metal yeah. had become dominant metal. And there, ha- there had already been the load reload backlash, um, and like all the sellout, all the sellout talk and cutting your hair talk. So it, again, it's kind of unwinnable. Um, you know, and it's, it, you bring up a really interesting point because, you know, bands that I really started getting into, I really got into like metalcore in, 2000 to 2010 so like shadows fall kills which engage Mm -hmm. you know their kind of big debut albums were what like 2002 ish in there um so taking all that into context too everybody's playing drop c you know what i'm saying yeah no 100 percent, right if you watch the uh dvd you can see James playing seven string, which is just weird to see. Weird to look at. Really? Yeah, it's on the third or fourth song. Oh, I don't want to think of that. <laughs> so, um, the other thought I had on this is they had been innovating constantly since around Master of Puppets. Yeah, or maybe even Ride the Lightning. If, if you mm-hmm. want to look at it that way, you, you know, they got more and more and more progressive than they innovated on the Black Album by dialing it back. <laughs> right? And then they said, that worked some, let's keep going. So they dialed it back a little bit more, and you got Load and Reload. And then they said, we need to reinvent ourselves, let's play with the symphony, let's write Minus Human, that's the direction they were going. And no leaf clover. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. And then they said, we need universe. to innovate. You know, that's a, like a lot of the, the major bands, be, you, you know, always need to be, it, <laughs> I'm overusing the term, but innovators, right? So I guess they found where, uh, the cliff stops. <laughs> you know, they, they fell off it. <laughs> they went too far it's, and they dialed it back like immediately. You, you bring up a good point with like, you know, Ride the Lightning to Master Puppets to and Justice for All getting more, definitely more progressive. I mean, look at Justice for All. Um, if with that Black Album podcast they release, really interesting, like it, when you take it from their perspective, it is really hard to write. A, like when you're used to writing these epic long songs, coming out with a four minute, five minute song, you know, mm. and they continued that with load, continued that with reload. I mean, yeah, you have some longer songs on those albums, Hello Torrent, for example, but, and then suddenly taking those breaks off, you would get something like St. Anger, right? Have you have that really yeah. polished sound of the black album, like so polished and tight, you know, and you kind of get that same thing with load and reload in there. So I, I get it. It's just, I, I, I'm still just flabbergasted by the weird musical landscape of 2003. So let me just read you. So, so St. Anchor was the number one record 
one week, the week of July 21st. Mm -hmm. Let me just read you the three before it and the three after it. All right? (laughs) No. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, May 31st. Marilyn Manson, The Golden Age of Grotesque. I don't awful even, Marilyn Manson album. I don't remember any of that. Who's that? <laughs> Stained, 14 uh, Shades of Grey. Okay. Led Zeppelin, How the West Was Won. <laughs> triple, that's a live album, right? Triple live album. Yeah. All right. St. Anger is displaced on June 28th by Luther Vandross, Dancing with My Father, his last studio album. What? <laughs> then, then Monica after the storm then Beyonce dangerously in love the top album of the year is 50 cents get rich or die trying um there are very few multiple um week number one albums um the biggest ones are the eight mile soundtrack Nora Jones, Come Away With Me, The Bad Boys 2 soundtrack, <laughs> and my personal favorite, Clay Aiken's Measure of a Man. So this is just an insane musical time. Yeah. You measure, you measure a man in inches. Yeah, yeah, true. This is the, and around. the dying throes of the, of the uh, major label age. How many copies did that move in the first week? Saint Anger was what two hundred thousand, two hundred fifty. Oh, I I had that, and then I looked up something else. <laughs> yeah, they're so their number one week, which is a few weeks later, is four hundred eighteen thousand. Um, Man, but Eddie. but the Zeppelin album the week before was number one with a little more than. One thousand, uh, one hundred fifty thousand. So it just, I think sales are diminishing here. It's like the beginning of digital music. No, thank you, Lars. Um, like who's buying, who's buying records? Um, that's word. Yeah, I Jeez. mean, the commercial music peaked in '99. Yeah. And, you know, '99, 2000, you'd need, a, you'd need to sell a million records to get that bot and uh yeah so i mean yeah that's a good point because that's 90 i'm thinking 99 that's when the second limb biscuit album came out all that stuff I and mean, that was a huge record i remember that and woodstock 99 was in 99 yeah. as well and we all know how that turned out great <laughs> How to turn know, one, one thing, I, one thing I couldn't stop thinking about and listening to Saint Anger. Do you remember that whole thing when Wes Borwin left Limp Biscuit, and when he came back, two thousand five, two thousand six, they put out mm-hmm. that EP, mm-hmm. the closest thing they've done to like met metal, but it definitely had this kind of stripped down, kind of post punk, yeah. killing joke vibe that this album has. Absolutely. So, how you many know, ears are you going to give Saint Anger now? Well, <laughs> is that what we're doing? I, just, I, I lost track. I just discovered that the hands down number one album of 2022 is the Encanto soundtrack. Yeah, I can believe we, that. We don't talk about the Encanto soundtrack. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Doc, if you don't get the joke, you're welcome. <laughs> One, that's, two, that's, three, that's a good four, thing. Five. Like taking Saint Anger in context, S and M Saint Anger, then um, Death Magnetic. I also enjoy Death Magnetic. Also had a slew of production issues, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, it, I remember. They, you're you're absolutely right. The uh, the master, well, the mix was brick walled, so the yes. master is brick walled. I think I definitely blew out some speakers listening to Death Magnetic. <laughs> yeah, in my, yeah. Um, in my uh, Saturn. Death Magnetic also so. has songs that go on too long. Like, they didn't fix mm-hmm. that. <laughs> they got it figured out by Hardwired. Yeah. But, uh... 
I think Magnetic has some great songs. I, I personally, in some cases, feel track for track, Death Magnetic is a little better than Hardwired. I think there's some good stuff on there. You know? Yeah, I buy that. I agree with that. I think Death Magnetic, they found the middle ground between what they were trying to do uh, mm-hmm. on St. Anger and a good record. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I also remember having when Death Magnetic came out, and even though I had heard that first single, um, I remember putting, uh, it was still a CD, I remember putting that CD in the CD player and kind of wincing, because I was like, please don't be St. Anger too," And then, then being pleasantly surprised. And so I wonder how much of my enjoyment of Death Magnetic is just the relief that it's not. Well, I mean, and Unforgiven 3. Holy shit. I used um, to hate Unforgiven 3. I love Unforgiven 3. That's but my ne- favorite of the Unforgivens. I love it now, too. It's a great song. Mm. I remember because well, when I joined Fade to Black, you were anti Unforgiven 3. Yeah, that's it. I, it changed at some point, probably. Because yeah. uh, when, we, when we drive very, very far to do shows, I'll often put on Metallica. Like to Columbia, Maryland. Right. <laughs> and, mm. Or Bakersfield. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, since we play so much of the earlier albums, I don't want to listen to them. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we're about to play them. So we put on hard, Hardwired. We put on... I put on mm-hmm. Death, Death Magnetic more often than most other things. Yeah. And then some Load and Reload. But we, they we're playing an inc- it. We're playing an increasing number of load and reload. Yeah. So if you get Death Magnetic, if if you go out and seek it, find the 2015 iTunes remaster. Yes, because you showed oh, me that, really? and it was incredible. Yes, yes, it's it's. Uh, I you can buy it from Metallica now. So yeah, I, oh. I bought it as Flack, which you know me, I I, I don't care if it makes no difference. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna own the entire waveform. Damn it. Mm. So, um, yeah, go, it, it's much more listenable. Uh, Absolutely. The, the original master, like, I can't listen to it uh, on headphones because it's like, yeah. It's just... yeah. And once again, well, it's the snare. They overcorrected with the snare. <laughs> how much of the botch production on on Saint Anger and Death Magnetic do we think Metallica like? merely enabled versus actively steered like did they hmm. want that or did they just not push back uh, wh- what a, a good, good question universe, so. we might have to save that for a death magnetic episode <sighs> hmm that's a great question Doug. that's yeah but, well lars is known for uh getting in there and fucking with shit uh he turned down the base in in um on justice he took the snares off his snare in St. Anger. Yeah. I assume he's the reason Death Magnetic is brickwalled. Like, he's trying to do the thing to make them stand out in some way. And, uh, is, hey, maybe don't do that. <laughs> cool. They were saying whenever they do the, the mixing and all that, it's they get three votes. James gets a vote, Lars gets a vote, and the producer gets a vote. So, I mean... Two of the three had to yeah. have supported that, right? So there, there are two people doing it. Interesting. Well, like they, they put on a, a copy of like the 1940 Mummy and say, "Hey, Kirk, look!" He's like, "Oh, the Mummy!" And then he's watching that. <laughs> and then they, they decide ban things. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any uh, closing statements before I, I get to how I wanted to wrap this up? Guys, did you know Lon Chaney's a genius? Are you ready? That's my Kirk Hammett impression. I have the Metacritic <gasps> reviews for this, and Ooh. each of them has a little blurb. Okay. So, uh, how about, let's see. Uh, no, I, I was thinking we could do a contest where I read you the blurb and you tell me the score, but I think it's... <laughs> That would be too easy. So how about I okay. give you I give you the publication and you tell me if it's more or less than fifty percent. Got it. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. You mean like 
four, four, fifty percent, four, like good. Yes. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> so it goes from zero to a hundred. So if it, uh, a positive okay. review is okay. over fifty, and a Got negative it. review is it. under fifty. Thank you for the clarification. So like certified fresh. <laughs> right. Uh, so okay. all right. So Matt, what do you think? Uh-huh. E online gave it. Are, are you talking about E exclamation mark e online? Exclamation. Okay. All right. Um, oh, I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> I am going to say that E. Ooh. They're a pop. They're, they're kind of garbage. They were even more garbage. I don't think Kim Kardashian was alive yet. Um, I'm going to say they did not. Give it over a 50%. They were a negative review. I think it was 69. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm changing my vote. It was a 69. It's a good thing you did because they gave it. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to hit this 83 times. They gave it 83%. Really? Wow. But I have a feeling they didn't listen to it because it says, while St. Yeah, Anger oh. doesn't go back to the speedy, epic crafting days of yesteryears, it's all balls, badass rock, and blistering visceral lyrics. Uh, there's plenty of super fast stuff. What the fuck are they talking about? What did they listen to? Like, uh, like Melissa Rivers was probably big at E back then, and she asked whoever she was dating, Hey, what'd you think of the Metallica uh, album? I need to write something for the blog. Oh, yeah, balls to the wall. I know, she called it a weblog. These weblogs, if we don't keep writing them, no one's gonna, no one's gonna read them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, these are reviews that came out at the time. Right, okay. All right, so, Doug, I'm gonna give you the first crack at Entertainment Weekly. More or less than 50%? Oh, I could, uh, it's a flip of the coin, because they would, their editors would know how to interpret the veracity of whatever's handed to them. I'm going to say it was probably negative. Oh, you're wrong. It was 83. Oh. It, it got the same score as I was going to say 72. Good wow. Guess, are, they just, are they just stealing from each other? Sane yeah. Anger. I, yeah. This is an Entertainment Weekly. Sane Anger is arguably the season's finest metal offering and the band's best since 1991's Metallica. What? He throws corns untouchables. <laughs> All right, Mark. Yeah. How about that hurt? New York Magazine. Oh. Parentheses Vulture. Sixty-one percent. Over fifty is correct. You get a sad but true snare. <laughs> wow. They called it utterly raw and rocking. What they give it as a rating? Eighty. I, I don't think I like. Are there any negative reviews from these publications? Well, there sure, have to sure, be. but don't don't let that be the clue for the next one. Village <laughs> Voice, forty-eight percent. Anyone else? Anyone else? The Village Voice. They hate knows. everything, but it the, sounds they, like they yeah like that this. that guy that guy with the glasses and the curly hair of the Village Voice who I'm picturing from all those like. I love the 80s uh, mm-hmm. things on VH1. That dude hated St. Anger. I'm going to look up the Village Voice now. Village Voice gave it a 20. Oh. <laughs> 20. Yes. They said songs like Frantic, Dirty Win- Window, and even the ballad esque Sweet Amber, Stop and Start, Cut to Pieces by Groove Robbing Edits that replaced the guitar harmonies on which Metallica built an industry. Good, good, excellent. All right, how about the yep. AV Club? Hmm. The guy I was thinking of, by the way, Michael Musto. Thank um, you. Um, <clears throat> the AV Club. They're going to like AV that it's Club. digitals. <laughs> They're going to like that it's digitals. Um, They're not Pitchfork. They're not it's possible. They like it. I don't. I don't think Vice Music existed yet. <laughs> um, uh, I, I do. They, wanna, I do want to say I'm not sure they actually listened to it based on what they said. <laughs> oh, they're gonna. Then that's like a ninety. 
Good review. 100%. Yeah, a best flawless. Album ever. The AV I, Club says a I, flawless album no one could find fault with. I apologize. I, I'm going to give you that. Because I, I, I confused you with my clue. <laughs> they gave it a 20, and they said St. Angers suffers mightily for its thin, washed out sound. A messy, unsatisfying misfire. Is it thin and washed out? I, it's, it's tinny. It's messy ah. on purpose. I, I don't think it's thin. There's still it's bass, not, <laughs> you know? I about, think they're confusing tinny and thin. It's definitely a flat sound, but thin it is not. All right. Uh, just a couple more. How about all music? Well, they love all music. Um, <laughs> they have no quality control. It's, it's probably two and a half. It's probably about fifty <laughs> percent. Like, like they oh, okay. I'm yeah. I'm gonna. I'm going to dissent by concurring with Doug and say <laughs> they gave it an exact fifty percent. Fifty three. Two and a half stars. Oh, by Price is Right rules. Mark gets the the sad but true snare. They gave it an eighty for it, so that would be a wow. four out of five. Saint Anger looks people. Looks, just I don't copied off of each other. Well, this is why I don't believe in reviews. <laughs> Saint Anger. Are they just looks inward with a hard eye, and while it finds some grinning demons in that pit, it also unearths some of the sickest grooves of Metallica's twenty plus year Wait. lifespan. Hold up. I might not know what the word groove means <laughs> if Saint Anger contains sick grooves. Up sick until is, I not up until sick, I heard that review. Ist. I yeah, sick ist, right? <laughs> up until a moment ago, I had a pretty good sense of what a groove was, and I listened to the Adam Neely YouTube a lot. Uh, but now I have no idea. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna read you a couple of the the ones close to fifty. All right, okay. culturedose.net gave it 60. The production on St. Anger is abysmal. Okay. All right, Play Louder also gave it 60. While there's no denying that Metallica have produced a huge and welcome blast from the past, not. It also but, <laughs> represents a monolithic slab of noise that stretched over 11 songs in 75 minutes is just too dense and daunting to be truly enjoyable. That you know what this review I am giving my most accurate award. I, I think if I were to, oh if wait, I were no, to it's sum up my shit. feelings. It's Metallica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there. Yeah, <laughs> you know sorry. what? That this person, whoever they are, wrote a truth. <laughs> yeah, right. I think that's spot on because it is mm. basically an artistic success. It does exactly what their aims seem to be. Right. It's just. Not enjoyable. Yeah, they, they were satisfied with it at one point until apparently everyone except music critics heard it. <laughs> yeah. you, have you heard of shakingthrough.net? Nope, but you know if it's a .net, you know it's reputable. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Me neither, so I won't quiz you on it. They said they gave it a 34 and said the guitar stumble in a monotone and mid-level Monotone of mid-level processed rattle. The drums don't propel as Not much as struggle no. to the size, an all too turgid pace, and the no. rage is both unfocused and leavened with too much narcissistic navel gazing. <laughs> okay, well what? that that last part is true, but again, <laughs> no and no. The the, the, the guitars aren't no. monotone. If anything, there's too much going on and they're they're you know at at points in saint anger i thought are they going with like crazy like charles mingus like polyrhythm like with all these guitars that seem to just sloppily like no it's slap not. over each other no it's just supposed to be sloppy that's the point yeah yeah i was like is i was like there's got to be something more here and i i felt like a crazy person like looking for the clues. It's like, oh, if you squint your eyes and turn it, this is exactly the shape of a blade. A blade that's pointing to the sun. The sun. Okay. And who makes us angry? Sons, fathers, father. Aha! It's a. <laughs> and, you know, it just got crazy. <laughs> wow. All right. How about. Uh, I mean, this is a quiz. Rolling Stone. I, I have to recuse they myself. 
because I prepared the I read the Rolling Stone review again. Mark says yeah, they, they loved it. This episode. Doug, they they definitely loved it. I probably why I bought the album. They absolutely loved it. They gave it an eighty. This is loud, expansive, unrepentant Metallica. They say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, NME. Do you know them? New music. M M. Uh, that's Make- November. Mike Echo. Oh, no more explanations. Music magazine. New Musical Express gave it the second highest rating. A four. <laughs> <laughs> they gave it a 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. The true wow. masters have finally awakened from their slumber. Uh, uh, By Lars Ulrich, <laughs> special reporter, <laughs> NME. Yeah. All right. The second lowest review is from the Alternative Press. It's well, it's tied for the second lows. The guitars are processed into high tech oblivion, and every song is eight minutes long. And it should that. be five. They're right on the second half. They're right on the But again, right it's supposed part. to be raw. It's not yeah, the word processed. At all. Oh, what the yeah. hell are these <laughs> people listening to? All right. So I got. You know what? But what did they get? What they? What did they rate it? Twenty. Okay. Doug, do you remember like that when we were? Something lower. We were like reviewing movies on the basis of their violence or something, and we realized it's really easy to be a film critic. I think it's even easier to be a music critic. Just say like a bunch of buzzwords. I thought yeah. it was overprocessed in its simplicity. <laughs> you know what's even easier is uh, Very is reviewing points. metal yeah. promos. Uh, I mean, no, that's hard. That takes experts like you, me, Doug, and sometimes Mike. Right. <laughs> and then Dave to talk about fish. Yeah, Dave to talk about, you know, the time he ate a sandwich. What? Well, here's what I'm sort of brooding on with Sin and Anger. All right, so it's easy enough to name the, to name the best song or the best couple songs. What's the worst song? Holy sh... Man. Purify. I think uh, the most uh. improved song... <laughs> is all within my hands because they uh yeah they, the, acoustic the acoustic version is fantastic, version is fantastic. yeah yeah uh, I, I think the worst song is purify i don't think i can answer yeah. that because i really really <laughs> i hate don't invisible kid right i don't know it's so long <laughs> i don't know the back half of the album so Ugh. While I want to agree with Invisible Kid, I don't know what I don't know about the, <laughs> the second half. Well, clearly yeah. where Purify has been right. Listen Tell me to about, Invisible Kid and Purify. Tell me about Purify. It's the second Purify, last track. Purify can't be the worst Saint Anger song because it's the shortest Purify, track. You and I. Purify. You and I. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that... I mean, just... Just the phrase "invisible kid." I, I don't need to know anything about this. Well, you know, such- like, and it's it's funny when you say "invisible kid." Like, you know how I know Metallica when they write pieces, they like give them cute names. Uh-huh. You know, like I remember um, uh, Cyanide used to be called like I think Casper or something. I don't know, but anyway, yeah. um, it seems like "invisible kid" should have just stayed a like a test name and not a song. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I hide inside is a much better. Yeah. War- it's still gross and scary and weird. Uh, I'm okay. Just go away is a much better title for this album of song and album. Um, uh, what's the, what's the song? I I'm blanking on what song it is, but what's the song where like, James's vocals are all weird, and he's like, ah! "Oh yeah, that's uh, the unnamed feeling." Kill, 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 kill. kill. kill, kill, kill. Yeah, that's oh, yeah, yeah. That's the that's, <laughs> that's in contention oh. too. I can't wait for Fade to Black to do that one at mm-hmm. at at a Hammerjacks or wherever. Let me do a venue near you. They uh, that that reminds me they. they there are like some clever-ish 
phrases on this album, but then they just like repeat them to death. Yeah. It, like um uh If only My lifestyle only, determines my death style, actually. If they said it once, I think right, it would yeah. ha- it, it would be it wouldn't be tired by the by the end of the song. You know, if only they had like a musical songwriting genius to help them, like uh Lou Reed, for example. Oh no. To really oh, no. to I really make a beautiful album. You know, I, I think that would be incredible. A Lou Reed Metallica collaboration would really be something I think everyone mm-hmm. would enjoy and love, even more mm-hmm. than St. Anger. All right. Two more Metacritic <laughs> reviews before we go. I I don't I haven't listened to enough. <laughs> Like, I've listened to maybe half a song from Lulu. All total. Uh, uh, well, I, I know what we're doing on our next road trip. Oh, I know no. what we're doing on our next Metallica. Oh, no. <laughs> I like, you know, my favorite... Do you ever see the Lou Reed music video where he just... It's a robot Lou Reed and he rips his face off? Cool. Uh, it's it, That's cool. And that's my mental picture of Lou Reed just ripping his face off. And like, in my mind, he died that way. Um, so, you know, uh, whenever, whenever I think about Lulu, I'm like, isn't he a robot? Okay. Two more. Spin magazine. They loved it. Anyone else? They, they probably loved it. They loved their, it. In their all, all head the other way. They thought it was uh, mediocre. They loved it so much. They oh. gave it a 91. This is the album Metallica lifers have been waiting for. An inspired, an inspired return to the complex savagery of old. Okay, and then the last one. Pitchfork. Pitchfork. Uh, it's pitchfork. probably higher than you would think. I bet that was in the 77%. 70s. I want to say it's... Yeah, I want to say it's above 50, but middling. It's it's a low, it's like a C minus. Mm-hmm. They rate it with four words. Uh-oh. What an utter mess. <laughs> they gave oh, I, it, they gave it eight out of a hundred. Eight. Zero, wow. zero, eight. Zero. <laughs> wow. wow. I thought the four words were going to be go by this album. For <laughs> no, they they fucking hated it. All right, wow, well, that's, that's it. I think we've solved nothing. <laughs> um, if you want to listen to Saint Anger, how Metallica envisioned it, check out the DVD that comes with Saint Anger. Listen to the rehearsal. If you want to hear it without that annoying snare, which is still in the DVD, just not as prominent as it is on the album. Uh, the uh, re-recording will be in the the uh, description below, and uh, yeah, until and if you and if you want to see the Lou Reed robot rip his face off, go search "No Money Down." <laughs> all right, all right, Metal Nation. Until next time, keep it. I guess I should have hit the other one, huh? <laughs> I know. No, you shouldn't have. There it is. Hey, Bob, we got no one to play bass. I got you guys. I got you. <laughs>